So our second speaker of the session is Hyun Kim from Rutgers University, and she'll talk about path integral derivations of K-theoretic Donaldson invariants. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation. Uh, I'm really enjoying the conference this week. Um, today, I'm going to talk about some of the, uh, my recent work with my collaborators, uh, Jan Manshot, uh, Greg Moore, Ron Kai Tao, and Sinyu Zhang. Sinyu is in the audience somewhere. Um, so this talk is going to be about uh, five-dimensional supersymmetry gauge theory, which is one of the most important and interesting playground in studying Sorry, I will just mute my mask. Um, in studying uh, interaction between uh, geometry and physics. So in general, 5D supersymmetry, 5D gauge theories are positively non-normalizable, but string theory predicts that uh, there exists a large class of such theories that admits a UV completion with 5D or 6D uh, superconformer field theories. And in fact, these theories can be obtained uh, by geometric engineering of M3 on local Calabi-Yau Freeford. And these theories are really, uh, plays an important role in studying relation to the 6D quantum field theories uh, with or without Lagrangian or three or four dimensional quantum field theories by uh, some calorie Klein reductions. And one of the key tools have been uh, various exact computation of partition function and indices um, defined on convex uh, five manifold such as S5 or S4 times S1. But compared to lower dimension examples, there are uh, not many examples uh, have been studied. And also even for those examples, it's, it's often very difficult to evaluate the expression explicitly. So what I'm going to talk about today uh, is a large class of correlators of 5D n equals one uh, gauge theory. For completeness, uh, I will focus on pure SU2 gauge theories defined on five manifold of type X times S1, where X is a smooth closed four manifold, okay? And I'm going to perform a topological twist on this four manifold X. And the correlator is defined as usual in terms of the infinite dimensional pass integral, uh, possibly with insertions of various operators. For example, you can insert a Wilson loop operators that wraps S1, and that sits at a point on X. And you could also consider some higher dimensional uh, operators that also wraps S1 and topological uh, in X, okay? And mathematically, these observables compute what's called the K-theoretic uplift of the Donaldson invariant on X, okay? So this is the uh, roughly the definition of the K-theoretic Donaldson invariant. There are lots of notations here, but I'm going to explain as we proceed. But roughly speaking, this is an integral over the moduli space of instantons on four manifold X. And in the integrand, you have, first of all, A hat genus, uh, and this is also, there are factors uh, that is associated, uh, these are actually uh, some characteristic classes associated with uh, some of the homologic classes on X that you choose as a definition of the invariant. Okay. At the end of the day, those factors that I just mentioned will correspond to insertion of various operators in the physics perspective. And I'm going to review uh, the precise relation between these two expressions in the first part of the talk. Okay. And this formula uh, in some sense can be thought of as a natural body analog of the Belinda formula. This K-theoretic Donaldson invariants have uh, been considered in a lot of different physical and mathematical uh, context, and these are some of the most important literature. Probably the first, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the paper that discusses this K-theoretic Donaldson invariant is a work by Nekrasov and also Losep Nekrasov Shatashibili in late 90s. And more recently uh, in mathematics literature, for example, in the paper by Gretchen Nakashima Yoshioka uh, in 2006, they, pro uh, they provided some um, uh, concrete uh, the proof of, of some of the result. And also recently it has been extended to more general class of uh, four manifold in this paper by Getcher, Ku, and Williams. And also in a slightly different context, um, the, in the physics literature, this uh, observables has been uh, revisited in the context of uh, the calculating 
uh, the entropy of black or microstated in certain photographic setting. Okay. However, the computation, the complete uh, derivation of these quantities from a five dimensional gauge theory point of view are only very partially understood. Yes. In the math papers you've mentioned, mm -hmm. are general four manifolds considered or only Kähler manifolds? Uh, in the first paper, in this paper by Gretchen Nakajima and Yushoka, they considered the manifold with uh, basically P2 plus is equal to one, uh, which is um, uh, the case where this, uh, there is a work of phenomena in the space of metric. And this paper, this is, uh, this four manifold is quite general. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today uh, is, I'm going to provide two different path integral derivations of uh, this observables. Okay, and you will see at the end of the talk that this is going to reproduce and also slightly generalize the result of these two papers uh, that I just mentioned. Okay, so these two approaches are uh, these two. So the first approach can be thought of as a computation in the Kuhn branch um, of the effective 4D theory on M4. This is via the so-called the U-plane integral analysis. This can be thought of as an uplift of the U-plane, the lowercase U-plane integral uh, of Moore and Witten in 90s, where they first uh, derived the, the, where they first provided the path integral derivation of the 4D, 4D version of the original donors invariant. Okay. So you will see that this, this approach is really powerful uh, in a sense that this can be, this method can be applicable for the very general class of X with uh, only some mild assumption that B2 plus is positive and also the B1 plus B2 plus uh, is odd. The latter condition just comes from the fact that um, in this integral here, um, the moduli space of instantons become the even dimensional so that uh, this formula gives you something non-trivial. Okay. The second approach uh, is from the perspective of SU2 instanton counting. This is in fact the approach that was uh, taken by the most of the papers that I uh, mentioned here, maybe except for this one here, the Kecheku Williams paper in the, in the most recent uh, one. Uh, but this formula, uh, in order to apply for this formula, you need to restrict uh, to the toric uh, four manifold. Uh, however, this formula is also, this approach is also very useful in understanding geometric interpretation of the partition function via the reduction to the supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So in some sense, the second approach can start off as a reduction to the 1D quantum mechanics, effective 1D quantum mechanics, and the calculation in there. And the first approach can be thought of as a more like a reduction to the, uh, the, the effective 4D theory on M4, okay? Of course, at the end of the day, do, uh, these two approach will give you the same answer. And I will show you at the end of the talk that uh, in fact, we get the same answer from these two approach in a rather non-trivial way, okay? So uh, I will uh, first start by some of the uh, very basics of the 5B n equals to one uh, gauge series defined on X1, X times S1. So the 5D n equals one G gauge theory, the pure G gauge theory is described by uh, the one vector multiplet n equals to one, one vector multiplet, which is written in the following form where Sigma is a real scalar valued in adjoint representation. And these are the superpartners of them, okay? And as usual, we have uh, the supersymmetric yang mill section, which can be written in the usual form. And we have the global symmetry group that uh, this action enjoys, which is SU2R times U1I. SU2R is the U1R uh, uh, symmetry uh, of the n equals one algebra. And then U1I is uh, the distinguished flavor symmetry um, in, that exists in any five dimensional gauge theory, which is associated to the topological current J, uh, which uh, can be written in the following form. The charged particle of the symmetries are nothing but the instanton particles. And what will play an interesting role in our uh, story is this the mixed Chan Simons term between the gauge group G and the U1I global symmetry that I just mentioned. Okay, so this is uh, the form of the mixed Chan Simons term, 
where f sub i is just the field strength of this u on i symmetry that I just mentioned. And these are the 3D transcendence like term that you can uh, write down here. Okay, and you can also write down the supersymmetric completion of this object. So this is the theory that we are going to talk about. And now we want to put the theory on uh, X cross S1 with a topological twist in X. And as usual, the topological twist is done by, so this is that is the one in the bracket, it's a rotation group on X. So we take the diagonal combination of, for example, SU2 plus and SU2R, which becomes SU2 prime. And we, we declare that the right-hand side is our new rotation group. So this process, this process gives you a BRC supercharge, one BRC supercharge, Q, uh, which that is squares to uh, uh, the translation in the in the S1 direction. Okay. From this, we can say that this procedure gives you a partial topological theory on uh, X cross S1, with the theory of topological on X, and we have a dynamics in the S1 direction. So the topological reduction on X gives you a 1D supersymmetric quantum mechanics with one supercharge that I will call N equals to one. Sometimes this supersymmetric quantum mechanics is said to have 1D N equals to half, but in this notation, I will just use the N equals to one here. So the question in here is what uh, does the partition function of this theory compute? So first of all, the effective supersymmetric quantum mechanics on S1 that I just mentioned is nothing but the 1D n equals one sigma model into the moduli space of instantons on X. Okay? So this is the moduli space of n instanton, uh, which I denote by m uh, sub mu k. Uh, here, the k is the instanton number, and mu is the uh, second super Whitney class of the principal bundle principal G bundle on X, which I denote by P, and we fix mu uh, for our computation. Then the Hilbert space of this quantum mechanics is nothing but the space of sections of spin bundle S on this moduli space. So you can write in terms of the direct sum. Next. And the twisted partition function uh, can be identified with the written index of this effective quantum mechanics. Um, and by the uh, standard argument, we can write uh, the written index in terms of the intersection integral over the moduli space, which is in this form here. Uh, I will explain what this uh, the parameter R is in, moment, in a moment, but this is roughly speaking a parameter uh, that counts the instanton numbers. Here, D of K is a complex dimension of the moduli space. So on top of this, we want to consider various different topological observables. Okay. So the most fundamental uh, and simplest observables that we can think of is the Wilson loop along S1 and sits at a point X on four manifold. Okay. So this can be written in a following way for a given representation R of gauge group G. And we can also consider a topological descent of this Wilson loop to obtain some higher dimensional topological observables. Okay. And one more interest, interesting observable that we can think of in five dimension is this 3D transcendence like observable that is defined on three manifold of type S1 cross S, where S is certain two cycle in four manifold. Okay. Note that this uh, mixed transcendence term that we introduced at the beginning of the talk can be thought of as a term that realizes the 3D transcendence observable if we consider uh, close to from Fi to be the Poincare dual of the three manifold S1 times S. Okay. And we can also consider coupling other 3D topological field theories. For example, we can start from some 3D n equals to four theories that has a global symmetry G, and we can perform the topological A twist on it and couple this G gauge G a global symmetry to the gauge group of our theory. Okay. It'll be interesting to study uh, all those topological observables. Today, we are going to only talk about the, the Wilson loop along S1 and also the transcendence observables that I just mentioned. Okay. 
So let's first uh, talk about the 3D transign of observable. So this is the, uh, the term that realizes the 3D transign of observable. And we will label this observable by N, which is nothing but the flux of this V1 I symmetry. Okay. So if we turn on this N, this mixed transignment term induces a line bundle Li on the moduli space, whose first term class is given by this expression here. Okay. So here, this board phase F is the curvature of the universal bundle over X cross the moduli space. And now in the presence of this new line bundle, the Hilbert space of quantum mechanics uh, becomes a space of sections of spin bundle times uh, this line bundle. And by the, again, the standard argument, we can write the partition function in the following form. Now with this extra contribution from the exponential of the first term class of this line bundle. I'm missing this uh, subscript i here. And also this factor can be thought of as an insertion of the Donaldson map in the Donaldson theory, which is a map from the second homology on four manifold to the second cohomology of the moduli space, which is evaluated at the co-dimension two locus S, which is Poincare dual of this flux. So we can also consider a Wilson loop that sits at a point on the four manifold and by the similar argument, you can show that this leads to an insertion of the turn character of the universal bundle in representation R evaluated the point at the point X. Okay. So to summarize, the partition function of the 5B n equals to 1 supersymmetric Young Mills theory with the Wilson loop at a point X and some turn Simons observable defined on the surface S can be uh, written in a following form. And this is uh, going to be our definition of the K theoretic donuts invariant. Okay. So the question is, how do we compute uh, this observable? Okay. So here are uh, the summary of our approach to the computation of the partition function or the K theoretic donuts invariant that I just mentioned. Okay. So the first of all, um, this 5B n equals to one theory defined on a circle can be thought of as an effective 40 n equals to two theory defined on a four manifold X, but now with infinitely many Kaluza Klein particles with mass proportional to the one over R. Here the R is of course the, the radius of the size of the, the S1 circle. Okay. Uh, and from there, now that we have effective four dimensional n equals to two theory, we use basically uh, the strategy that was used uh, in the original derivation of the, uh, the 4D version of the donuts invariant by Moore and Witten. So first of all, we use a topological invariant on X and scale the metric on X uh, like this, okay? Then the physics is replaced by a low energy effective theory on a Coulomb branch of the effective uh, 4D n equals to two theory. And as I will uh, illustrate in a moment, the Coulomb branch is also described by some cyber grid in geometry. And then the computation of the partition function is reformulated into that of much easier computation of cyber grid invariance with additional contribution from the U-plane integral that I'm going to explain uh, momentarily. Okay. Is there any, any questions so far? Okay, then um, I'm going to describe uh, cyborg witten geometry of this effective 4D n equals to 2 zero. Okay, so from this slide, I'm going to focus on the gauge group SU2. Uh, and for this theory, uh, the classical Coulomb branch of effective 4D n equals to 2 theory on M4 is parameterized by a complex scalar A, which is in the following combination, where sigma is a uh, the adjoint valued real scalar in, uh, um, in the 5D n equals one vector multiplet, and it's, it's actually the, uh, the Cartan of that part. And A is valued in, as you see here, the infinite, infinitely long uh, cylinder. Okay. 
And the Coulomb branch effective theory is determined by a multi-valued function called the free free potential that looks like here. The first factor actually comes from summing over all the uh, demos from the, uh, the color decline mode from the S1 reduction. Here, as I mentioned, this uh, R is the radius of S1, and lambda is a dynamically generated scale of the 4D effective theory on M4. And in fact, this is related to the 5D gauge coupling in a following way. And it's going to be useful to define a dimensionless, dimensionless uh, radius, the curly R, which is a combination of R and lambda. And this is the parameter uh, which played a role of the instanton counting parameter in the earlier slides. Okay. Now, the order parameter of the quantum corrected uh, Coulomb branch is nothing but the vacuum expectation value of the fundamental reason, okay? which can be written in the following way. Uh, now, what we call the cyborg written curve is the family of elliptic curve, which is parameterized by complex number Q uh, that can be written in a uh, following expression here. Okay, the, so the U sits, sits in here, here. As usual, we have a one form uh, uh, here, which will be integrated uh, the, to give the A and A dual uh, of the cyborg written theory. Um, so the cyborg written geometry that I just mentioned is an elliptic vibration of what we call the U plane. Okay. The generic value of this radius this U plane is parameterized, of course, by this complex number U, but now with the four singularities where this fiber becomes singular. And physically, this is a point where one of the BPS particles in the theory becomes massless. Okay. So, in, a, in addition to usual monopore and ions, in a theory that can be obtained, that was obtained from the 5D theory, has uh, additional uh, BPS uh, states which is from the instanton particles and also color decline particles whose mass is proportional to one over R. And for example, this two point U3 and U4 are the points where a dionic instanton becomes massless. So for example, in the 4D limit uh, where R goes to zero, these, these two points U3 and U4 are pushed, pushed away to infinity and you are left with the original version of this, this two singularity in the pure um, uh, SU2 4D cyber written theory. Okay. Um, it is going to be very useful to, uh, uh, to say something about the fundamental domain of tau. Okay. So for example, from the structure of the cyber written curve, we can write down the relation between the parameter U and this modular parameter tau which can be written in terms nicely uh, of uh, the, the various theta functions, okay? So this function is easiest to study for R equals to one. In this case, you can check that U tau is in fact modular invariant for congruent subgroup gamma zero of eight inside SU2, SL2Z. And therefore the fundamental domain of tau is upper half plane uh, divided by gamma zero of eight. Okay. This is precisely the double copy of H0, H mode gamma zero four of the 4D uh, super young laser. Okay. It's slightly more complicated for generic R. In this case, because of this square root structure, you see that there is a branch point at uh, U equals to zero point whose position depends on uh, R. Okay. So this is the structure of the fundamental domain of the 4D effective theory obtained from the 5D theory. So now, uh, how do we do the U-plane integral? The following the work of Moore and Witten in uh, four-dimensional theory, you can write the partition function of effective 4D theory for B2 plus larger than zero um, in the following form. This is our partition function. And phi is the quantity that we call the U-plane integral. And the last term is the contribution uh, from the four point where the new light degrees of freedom emerges. Okay, 
here's the point where some of the BPS particles uh, became massless. Okay. And in fact, this structure depends very much on the precise value of B2 plus. So for example, when B2 plus is positive, you can argue that, for example, uh, this U plane integral completely vanishes. And also this entire partition function is completely independent of the choice of metric on X, okay? However, something interesting happens for B2 plus is equal to one. In this case, uh, you can argue that in the, uh, the space of metric, there are co-dimension one words. So if you cross uh, this words, the uh, description of the modular space changes. And then the partition functions are in fact not the constant, but are expected to jump discontinuously as a function of metric on X, okay? This metric, it turns out that comes through uh, the quantity J, which is called, sometimes called the period point. This is the unique element, the second cohomology of X that satisfies this relation, okay? So for B2 plus is equal to one, I mentioned that we have the both of this contribution and also uh, this partition function is a three piecewise constant function uh, of the choice of the period point uh, J. And you can write down, you can massage the expressions here and you can write down the word crossing of these quantities into the contribution from various control integrals around uh, various singularities um, in the U plane, but you can argue that the work crossing, the dependence on J, only comes from the large contour in the weakly coupled region. Okay. In fact, this uh, the, there exists a work crossing around the singularities, contours around the singularity, but those dependence on J will exactly cancel uh, the contribution from the uh, this part here. Uh, which is the contribution from the side of which in parts. Okay. This fact may sound like um, technical details, but this is actually very powerful because you can utilize this fact that I just mentioned to compute the cyborg within invariant for entire class of full manifold with B2 plus uh, is larger than one. Okay. I'm going to comment on uh, this case at the end of the talk, but we will at the moment focus on the B2 plus is equal to one. Okay, so the Coulomb branch effective action. So the effective theory on Coulomb branch can be understood as n equals to two, the body n equals to two, U1G times U1I theory, where U1I is not dynamical. And here we are going to assume that uh, for simplicity, B1 of four manifold is zero and B2 plus is one. And you can argue that only the zero mode contributes to U-plane integral, and you can rewrite the Coulomb branch effective action uh, just uh, restrict to the zero mode of the of, of, of the, uh, the partition functions, which is like this. Uh, here, tau a b are uh, essentially couplings for this gauge group. Tau one one are the user gate coupling. Tau one, two are the V, I, I denoted it as a V, which is uh, just the coupling between the mixed uh, term here and the psi is essentially the coupling for this U1I uh, symmetry. Here, MI is essentially the mass that corresponds to the U1I symmetry that I introduced in the beginning, okay? Um, and you can integrate all the zero mode of the theory which gives you some finite dimensional integral over the zero mode. And you can write down the U-plane integral as an integral over the uh, FR, which was the fundamental domain uh, of this parameter tau. Okay, so this is the expression for the U-plane integral where this new R summarizes um, the, the, the contribution from the, um, the order gravitational couplings as well as uh, the contribution from integrating out the zero mode of the fermions. And C is basically the coupling that I introduced in the last slide. The C was coupling for the U1I symmetry. So C is defined as an exponential of that. And this 
factor psi summarizes the sum over all the gauge fluxes. Okay, so they can be written in a following form. Um, and from the cyborg written geometry that I just uh, tried to explain, you can write all the expression that appears in the integrand in terms of the Q series, where Q is exponential of two pi i tau. Okay, so for example, the V here, V was the, uh, what was defined here, the coupling between these two group, the V can be written as a Q series uh, by solving this equation, this elliptic equation here. And using that V, you can also write down the factor C as a Q series. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of remarks here. Um, so actually, um, as I try to draw in this figure, there are lots of monodromies around the various singularities. For example, the, each of those, uh, the fact is each of these contributions here in the integrand can in principle depend on the choice of duality frame. And it's uh, completely non-trivial that the combination of all these factors are uh, single valued under the all the monodromies that we have in the U plane. Okay. However, we check that uh, the integrand is in fact single valued under all the monodromies we have, which is a non-trivial check. And in establishing that single valuedness, uh, a proper choice of Q exact terms in the original action was really important. So for example, here in this action, for example, except for this term here, you may be able to see that all the other terms are in fact the Q exact pieces, okay? But however, um, in establishing single valuedness, the proper choice of the Q exact terms um, are really crucial. And also this condition that I just mentioned determines further contagion condition of the background flux uh, N that I introduced as a, uh, the inserting insertion of the transcendence of Okay. So I will mention something about the work processing because we are focusing on P2 plus is equal to one example. So suppose that we have two period points, J and J prime, and following what is uh, done in this paper, it is possible to show that this integrand of this theory can be written as a total derivative of some non-holomorphic function, where that non-holomorphic function is written um, in the following way. This E is essentially the error functions, and the Y is the M of tau, and B is the imaginary of, essentially this encodes the imaginary part of uh, the flux N that I just mentioned. And this includes the non-holomorphic uh, dependence on tau and z, okay? And now that we uh, can write down the integrand as a total derivative, by performing the integration by part, we can write down the work crossing formula um, as an integral at infinity in, um, in the fundamental domain, which gives you the work crossing formula simply as a following form where this is expressed as the, uh, the pick, just the picking up the constant piece in the Q expansion uh, of all these quantities here. Okay. So how do we evaluate this expression? So in fact, there are two ways to evaluate this expression. So the first approach is to expand the integrand, integrand that I just mentioned here, this one here, in small r first, and then evaluate the q to zero term. Okay. This pro procedure actually reproduces the formula of Getcha and the Kojima Yoshioka in 2006. So for example, the partition function uh, for the P2 case can be computed via the work crossing formula that I just derived, and also the using the blow formula and also the existence of the vanishing chamber for F1. This is a result. So for example, you can see that around this diagonal line, there are some interesting uh, dualities that roughly exchanges the, uh, the transcendence observable N 
and the instant number. And it'll be, it, it'll be interesting uh, to try to understand this sort of duality more physically. And in particular, this expression that I just mentioned agrees with the interpretation, the calculating the holomorphic Euler characteristic value in certain line bundle. In particular, this only contains the positive powers of R um, as this formula implies. Okay. However, uh, in the five dimensional uh, theory point of view, it is actually more natural to, to keep the parameter R finite because this uh, was the radius of the fifth sucker and expand the integral this small Q first, okay? And take the Q to the zero limit, keeping the R finite. Uh, surprisingly, it seems that there are some sort of order of limit issue between taking R um, small and the small, uh, taking the Q small. And we find that the result of the second approach doesn't agree with the first approach. So in particular, for P2 plus is equal to one, the result of this U plane integral uh, for the second approach seems to contain negative powers of R. Okay. So this raises a puzzle. So how do we interpret this R negative dependence of the partition function? So this is the puzzle that we haven't um, solved yet. There could be a lot of uh, possibilities. For example, is there any subtleties in defining the prepotential in certain reason in the U plane, or um, could there be some subtleties in the UV completion, or could there be uh, some sort of the uh, other branches of solution uh, exist that can cancel this R negative dependence? Uh, we don't have any conclusion yet, um, but this is a very interesting puzzle that needs to be better understood. Okay, is there any questions? How many times do I have? Seven minutes. Okay, great. So for the uh, last uh, few minutes, I'm going to talk about the second approach, which is uh, the via the toric uh, localization. So there is an alternative pass integral derivation when our four manifold is a smooth toric four manifold. Okay. In this case, using the equivariant localization with respect to this toric action, we can write down the partition function as a sum over the contribution from the instanton localized at fixed loci on X. So schematically can be written in a following form. So this integral here is basically the product of the K-theoretic Microsoft partition function defined on S1 times uh, C2 with omega deformation, which is localized at I's fixed locus on X. So for example, on P2, this is a product of P2, we have the, the chi is equal to three. P2, we have um, the, the product of the three necrosol partition function as, a, as an integral. And this partition function is written in terms of certain central integral in the Coulomb branch and also certain sum over uh, the fluxes. Okay. As I mentioned, this approach is adopted by many uh, papers, including all this paper that I wrote down there. However, there are still some puzzles here. For example, the remaining questions are, what's the contour here? And also, what is the sum here? Okay. And how do we recover the U-plane integral of a formula that I just uh, introduced? Okay. So this is a question that I will try to answer in a few minutes. Uh, so to answer this question, we can uh, just focus on the non-equivalent limit uh, of, the, of this partition functions. So as we heard in the, uh, the you know, talk in the morning session, this Microsoft partition function can be written uh, in a following asymptotic expansion in epsilon one, epsilon two, small limit. However, the summing over all the contribution from all the fixed loci, if you put together everything, uh, we obtain a finite non-equivalent limit of this partition function, the integral of the partition function. And you obtain this expression here. As you can see here, this expression is essentially written in terms of the order couplings that we um, uh, they defined uh, in the discussion of the U-plane integral. For, for example, this is the tau one one tau 
And this was basically the fee that we uh, discovered. And the, this is the, the factor C that I mentioned in the Euclidean integral uh, part. So the interesting thing is that the, for the toric manifold, we always have p2 plus is equal to one. So we expect that partition function uh, suffers from the work of some phenomena. Okay. The supersymmetric localization process gives you an expression like this. This is a finite dimensional integral over uh, some zero mode of effective 1D supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So these are nothing but the zero mode of uh, effective one this supersymmetry quantum mechanics, the, uh, the bosonic part of that. And by carefully uh, performing this integral, you obtain uh, the expression that I just mentioned in the previous slide. Okay, here this integrand is now the, the product of the necklace of partition functions. And if you carefully perform all this, uh, the zero mode integral, especially the, this integral, um, uh, of the, uh, the auxiliary field, you find that this contrast is A now depends on the choice of metric J, okay? And, and after a very careful analysis of the, those control integrals, for example, at the infinities of the cylinder that I just mentioned, that I mentioned in the beginning, you can write down the work causing formula in this approach. So for example, the difference between the partition function for just in choice of matrix J and J prime can be written as the residue integral at infinities of the product of the necklace of partition function uh, that I mentioned in this pre previous slide. And this expression is summed over certain subset of choice of fluxes that satisfy the following conditions. And by some non-trivial change of variables, you can show that this formula, in fact, agrees precisely with the work crossing formula that I derived in the Euclidean integral approach. Okay. So that was it. And finally, I will just conclude by mentioning briefly what happens with B2 plus slider general. So, from this expression here, and also the fact that the work crossing has strong, strong coupling singularities precisely cancel between these, these two expressions here. We can write down the expression like this. And since we know what happens in the left-hand side, it is possible to uh, know the, uh, how the, uh, the, the structure of the right-hand side, the structure of the side of written contribution, okay? And from this, it is possible to derive the K-theoretic donation invariance for P2 plus uh, larger than one. And this is a result that we find for example, this can be written as a sum over the contribution from four singularities here, where G mu is essentially the contribution from the sum of cyborg written invariance. Okay. We check that this precisely produces a recent result of Getcheck, Crew, and Williams. Okay. So this is a conclusion summary. Uh, this is what we just mentioned. The topological correlators of the 5B n equals 1 A series computes this expression here. And in particular, we derive the metric dependence for B2 plus is equal to one in two different approach, which they agree in a non-trivial way. And uh, we also have seen that this computation can be generalized to the B2 plus is larger than one. And there remains an important uh, the question uh, about the negative appearance of the negative power set. So this, these are some future directions. It will be interesting to try to extend uh, for uh, the computation to general rank one, what's called the EN type theories, and also to 5DN equals one star theory. Uh, the latter is expected to compute the chi y genus of the moduli space, which can be identified with the K theoretic version of the buffer written invariants. Uh, and there is, uh, in, in 4D theory, there is a distinguished flavor symmetry that I didn't mention in the talk, which is a U1 color Klein symmetry. Okay. And using this U1 colors of Klein symmetry, it is possible to compute the partition function of more general 5D manifolds, such as S5, uh, via the U plane integral approach. And this way gives you some interesting point of view of the S5 partition function that people have studied. And also, it will give you some uh, very nice uh, computational tool uh, that can actually evaluate the S5 partition function for a finite bank gauge theories. Okay. 
Okay. And it would be also interesting to uplift this constructions to 61,0 theory, which is expected to compute the so-called the elliptic version of this invariant. And also extension to the B1 positive um, is in fact uh, more straightforward. And in this approach, we will be able to understand certain aspects of 3D and equals to four theory uh, obtained by dimensional reduction. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you for the great talk. We have time for a couple quick questions. Okay, I'll ask a question. <laughs> if you evaluate this theory on a three manifold cross circle, do you think you'll get a K theory lift of FLIR type theory? Um, um, yeah, you mean the 4D theory on a, on a MP? The 5D theory. 5D yeah. theory on a S, yeah, yeah. I think this corresponds to the, this would correspond to the topological A twist of 3D and equal to four theory. So if that's a correct a topological twist, then yeah, I think the answer is yes. Okay. okay, if there aren't any further questions, let's thank Ian again.